I had to look a little more specifically into this uh, Alf field and he is in the past has been supposedly very uncannily accurate as far as predicting the price of silver and gold where it's going to peak out and he's got some predictions in here and just my personal thought and everybody's got their opinion right but I'm not in here to give advice I don't get paid to give advice I'm in here to win for myself so what I'm looking at with I think his prediction about he's talking about a silver gold ratio on his third wave which you know I don't even look at this stuff because one thing I know about technical analysis is that a lot of times get one geopolitical event and there goes all the technical analysis out the door you know you get one uh, margin rate increase goodbye right the whole thing collapses that's why you secure your gains and I'm gonna play more like my own thoughts because I'm kind of a cautious person do things in pieces you're not gonna you know yeah it'd be wonderful to buy on the absolute low and sell on the absolute high but you know what it kind of wrecks your nerves when you're trying to do that kind of stuff too and you might not be thinking clear so doing things in pieces keeps your head calmer that's my own thinking uh, he talks about a silver gold ratio going to approximately 28 to 1 on this third wave that I don't think is too crazy I was saying that the last time when we hit this about forty nine dollars back at the end of um, April 2011 the ratio was about 31 32 silver to gold so I figured this next time it's probably gonna go 30 or maybe a little lower so I don't think he's off there but he's thinking a gold target of forty five hundred dollars I don't know about that that's that's up there I, I was thinking maybe up to three thousand possibly possibly I'm thinking 2500 to uh, 2800 maybe 3000 I don't know but you know but if it goes to 2500 you're 30 to 1 you're over $80 silver big difference from 158 now if you go to 85 90 dollars and it crashes down to 47 you're gonna be kicking yourself <laughs> if you're holding out for 158 obviously I don't know if this is a fact but I think you know this I read this this guy came out of retirement to present the world all this information which um, he's a little thinking first off if a person knows what's gonna happen you never say nothing like if um you know President Aminajad told me that I'm gonna attack the Straits of Hormuz tomorrow <laughs> right now I'd be buying options on uh, double leveraged oil and making my bets right or maybe if I was afraid of options I would just buy a bunch of double leveraged oil right which I'm afraid of options I don't like those damn things because it's a win or lose double leverage I'm not I'm not afraid of I'm more conservative but if he told me something like that you know the president of Iran told me that <laughs> I wouldn't blab it everywhere maybe I would sell that information after I already made my position because I didn't want to gain some more money yeah but uh, <laughs> I wouldn't give it away for free that's for sure so um, and that's that's the way everybody is that's not me I'm not like playing a bad guy here that's the way everybody is and that's the reality it's so I don't know why he's giving out all this information so I think he's all part of the uh, you know one silver expert gold expert talks to another silver expert gold expert they make interviews and they talk back and forth and what's your opinion on this yeah <laughs> like you're gonna get information that way um, but some things and um, is common sense and I'm gonna print I'll put it on my information now as far as oil goes today um, I bought a little bit of back this thing went down to 96.52, and I don't know if that's the bottom. I didn't buy all of it back. I just bought a small portion of it back. But if it goes up to 100, that's gone too. You know, I'm just. I think it's going to be sitting in this range for a while, and I don't think nothing's going to happen because it's winter time. There's not going to be any big attack. I don't think. I don't think. This thing might drop lower. If it drops lower, I'm going to buy more. 
Now, if it drops below 95, I'm going in UCO. It might drop further, you know, which I'll hate. But it's still, I think it's a good position, pretty good bet, because I think it's going to go way the hell up. Now, I'm going to repeat something I said before many times. Silver and gold and oil is also related to all, all three are related, obviously. People know about silver and gold, but I don't think, well, without even knowing what Lindsey Williams said, I think it's pretty much a sure bet that oil is going to spike to $150 to $200 a barrel this year. And I think that's going to, and silver is going to be running up to the moon. But what happens when the demand really gets cut back because it's that high? It's going to be 2008 all over again. You're going to see a hard crash in silver. That's why I'm thinking silver is going to get like a two and a half, three times gain this year, and it's going to crash like crazy. And then it's same old game again. You know, maybe there will be the separation between physical and the paper markets at one point in time. Maybe there will be a big fear of people investing in, uh, you know, these brokerage houses like MF Global. Maybe that will come about. But that's right now. For the immediate future, that's not going to happen right away. Just like the euro is not going to crash right away either. So um, beware of these clowns because I'm uh, I'm put. That's why I got on here because I don't like I don't like the information they're giving out. Period. I don't like it, and including from the silver bugs, gold bugs, and you name it. I don't like the information they're giving out. Now, not that I'm an expert, but uh, let me put it this way: every guy I work for. They were making some money, and they were rich, but they made a shitload more money, and a lot of it was from me. So, I'm playing my own game right now, and I don't know if I'm right or not, but, uh, you know, I'm pretty aggressive, so usually I can nail the shit right when I think, and I don't let other people think for me. Um, this thing with um, this Alf Field, I think he's got. I think he's going to be basically right, but his prediction is going to be too high. The one thing you really watch when you know you're getting near the top is watch this silver gold ratio. I think he's about right with this 28 to 1. But I wouldn't be waiting for it to hit 28 to 1. When it's around 32, you should be, or even higher than that, you should be dumping in pieces. That's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to play it safer. And um, there's a guy down here who made a comment, which <laughs> maybe this is probably more in tune with uh, a lot of the silver crowd. I don't know who this guy is, but it makes sense. You know, he says one day, one of these brother, I guess he's talking about brother John F. and his MACD oscillators, or Alf with his Elliott waves, will be right, and we'll never hear the end of it. Um, hopefully, one or the other will happen, and which we are, you know, he still thinks they're they're good, and I and I agree with that. I agree with that. I think they're giving some pretty good analysis, but uh, it's exaggerated. That's what I think too. You know, it's 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 above what people are really going to get, unless there's a catastrophic collapse, and that is one reason. I am in a camp where you should always hold back some physical, no matter what, because there could be a catastrophic collapse, even if it's not planned. And you know, the elite don't, you know, the one percenters, you want to call them the elite or whatever the hell it is. They they don't have a handle on everything as much as people think. So. Uh, you know, that's that's one thing I think you should hold back physical no matter what, no matter what. But you could trade it too. You could do both. Uh, at this point, watching 15 silver speakers doing their best imitations of a broken clock do right twice a day, I would be happy with 50 or 60 dollars. Now I think it's, I think it's going above this. I'd be doing. You know, if you really. I'm trying to give some good advice, and the reason the advice I'm giving out is the crap I'm doing. So, if I screw up, I'm screwing myself up, so I'm not trying to mislead anybody. But I'd be selling in pieces. I'd be selling in pieces. And um, some of the physical, too. Some of it. Still a portion of it. Not much. But if you got electronic funds, you should be, you know, around 60 bucks. I think that's a good time to really start dumping most of that stuff even though it might go up quite a bit higher I don't think it's going to go up that much higher and I think it'll pull back you know and there'll be other opportunities once you make your gains secure them um, 
He's saying he doesn't care how it happens. My patience is wearing thin. Uh, you know what I mean? And I think that is, that's going on with everybody because they've seen it go up. They heard all the bullshit about it's going up to 100. They heard, you know, well, it's going to recover. It's this. But you know what? There's something that Lindsey Williams did say, which to my understanding is correct from the mentality I understand is that the elite are playing a game with you. They want you to get rid of the stuff. They want you to get rid of it cheap. So my game is I don't want to get rid of it cheap. I want to get rid of it expensive and I want to buy it back cheap because I think it's still going to be there. It's not going to be totally out of everything just yet. It's going to take a while yet, you know. That's going to take a while before you can actually say there's no physical silver around. But you got to remember, there's a hell of a lot of other commodities out there that people need besides silver. You know, one is food, quite obviously. So, um, you know, don't think all the money in the world has to jump into silver. It doesn't have to. Although, I think it's going to do extremely well. you got to remember, silver was below $30. If it went up 20 times, it's $600. 20 times. That's ridiculous. You know? And tell me there's not going to be inflation if it went up 20 times. But if I said $600 to some people, there'd be people coming back to me saying, I'd be recommending that you're selling short. I diff, you know, And like I said, if you were a person that absolutely knew the absolute price of silver, when it's going to be, you would keep your mouth shut because it's a card game and you want most people to lose. But um, I think the one thing he's revealing a lot here is about this ratio. This will tell you when, you're, irregardless of what gold is at, watch this ratio. He might be right about this, this 28 to 1. That's what I was figuring, a little bit below 30. But probably start selling around in pieces, around 34 to 1, 32 to 1, 30 to 1, then 28 to 1, nail it. You know, if it's if it goes that high. This way you secured gains. That's my plan. That's how I'm going to do it. Um, this, man, I don't know about this guy. I tell you the truth, um, this is Big Swear. And um, I heard this stuff, and I'm not, well, my personal opinion, you know, I think the guy knows a hell of a lot of facts about silver, but so what, right? $6,000 silver? Okay. He's saying it on fundamentals. Silver should be five times the price of gold because the above ground amount of silver is one billion ounces above ground physical silver. For investment purposes, and there's only five billion ounces, just five billion ounces of gold above ground physically. So he's saying that silver should be five times the price of gold. You know what? I just got a flat out state. That's idiotic. And you watch when people, I don't, me personally, when somebody gives me this kind of information, I don't trust anything they say. Anything. Anything. I mean, what I'll do is I'll say, you got a fact there, but I won't say, I won't trust his opinion on nothing. That's the way I look at it. If silver was even $300 an ounce right now, the market would be flooded with silver because the miners would get it. <laughs> There'd be people out there finding silver everywhere, all over the earth. I don't care if they had to dig it up by hand. At that kind of... At that kind of uh, price there'd be silver jumping into the market like I said it's gonna jump up hard it's gonna be like that 1979 spike it's gonna be a panic and you gotta be selling at the right point but I do have this fear like everybody else about the powers that be don't have a handle on what's going on with the fiat money supply even though they probably think they do there could be a lot of different things that happen they don't have a handle they, you know they don't know which way a war is gonna go they don't know which way geopolitical events will move so having some backup on silver and gold is very smart very smart but when it, it gets up to these panic tops where people are all and you know you could thank these guys like him because he's gonna make you rich because he's gonna find more people to jump in the market but I really don't know what he's doing behind the scenes and nobody does right only he does but there's a good line on here and uh, I agree with this line he says, uh, I'm a strong believer in the theory of Occam's razor, which states that in complex worlds such as silver analysis, the simplest analysis 
with the least amount of variables is usually the correct one and you know what that's how I think I agree with that I agree with that I sit I used to sit in these meetings with all this crap and some people would be afraid to say something I would say it but I had to watch you know but uh, a lot of it you know you call it common sense or business sense or something but sometimes people are too dug into uh, a lot of detailed BS and you know picking out this one fact like this and proving a point that silver should be six thousand dollars an ounce right now fundamentally because there's only one billion ounces of above ground silver for investment purposes and there's five billion ounces of physical gold for investment purposes that's nuts that's nuts that's BS well, people do what you want but you know I think people like this are very useful because they're gonna push your prices up just watch don't go holding out for this amount of money that's crazy um, I wanna get into one little thing about you know <laughs> politics very little bit well let me get on to this this guy kid uh, dynamite I think he's uh, he's got a good blog and uh, obviously he's Jewish because his mom's Jewish so uh, this is the Jewish kid you ought to listen to sometimes because I think he's got some pretty good ideas um, he's not anti-silver and I'm not anti-silver either believe me I'm not I think it's gonna do great you know if it went to six hundred dollars an ounce twenty times if it went to three hundred ten dot ten times that's a hell of a lot of money um, but it's gonna crash at one point in time I think this guy's got some good advice here and a lot of times he's got a good balance of what happens to you know and he's a Jewish guy Jewish will listen to a Jewish kid and I want to jump on to something here with this uh, politics because you know a lot of these people get on this stuff with politics because of um, you know it relates to um, what's going on with the economy you know um, you know they got Sarah Palin you know and all this garbage and conservatives and you know liberals and all this stuff right well, I personally think you're never going to find a good politician that's ever going to get up in a high ranks, period, ever. Because every single one of them has got a million tons of dirt on them, and they can pull the rug out from underneath them at any time. That's why you got to do your own thing and not worry too much about this politics garbage. Maybe more at the level of the congressman. That you might, that you could affect more. But, you know, I talked about this Ron Paul. I think there's something fishy with this that the guy's still, well, in my mind, it's a slam dunk, no brainer, he'd be dead if he was real. That's my opinion. I don't know, nobody likes that, but that's the way I think. I think I found this, uh, and I saw this blog a long time ago. I heard about Kathy O'Brien. I don't know if people ever heard of Kathy O'Brien. Maybe they think it's a bunch of crazy BS or something, but she was. Uh, sex slave and for the politicians and stuff so she's got a book out here you might want to look at some of this stuff because you might think um you know things aren't as you know you know nice as people think they are there's a lot of stuff going on this is one thing i know that they can they can pull up stuff on every single politician there is and if they get out of line they're done they're done so, I think the real way to fight the the system is to actually be correct in your financial assumptions. You know, gain the wealth, gain some power, and um, you know, outsmart you know the guys that are on the top that are trying to rip you off. And I think that's really the way to fight them. Um, but I did find this. I just want to point this out. This is called uh, the Senator Hillary dot blocks blogspot dot com. I've seen this quite a while ago. But it goes into a lot of things, and probably these conspiracies are probably accurate. They're not inaccurate. And I do want to point out that, you know, a lot of this stuff with the Illuminati, they're, they're not Jewish. I mean, there might be some in there someplace, but they're not. They're not. So, you know, they refer to them as the Illuminati. They're not Jewish, for the most part. For the most part. So, uh, you know. I thought that was, I just figured I'd throw that in there because I see a lot of politics about, you know, what is this person? Well, we interviewed Ron Paul, we interviewed Sarah Perlin, you know. I, 
or whatever. You know, I mean, I know they're not the same, but what I'm saying is there's a lot of garbage going on behind the scenes, and you ain't going to change it. What you want to do is you want to make money, and uh, that's what you change. That's what you can change. And uh, I want to say something else about, like, with the oil again. If this oil, I think, is going to go to 150 to $200 a barrel, I think that is when you're going to see the silver take off like crazy. But one thing you do know, what happens when oil goes super high? It crashes the economy. What happens when the economy crashes? The commodities go down, and silver is an industrial commodity. So, you know, look at things in concert with each other. And if there looks like, you know, there's a big lot of signs that oil's going to, you know, goes up to $150, $200, um, they're probably going to see a crash and you'll probably see silver crash. And that is really where you can make your money on the volatility more than anything. So, uh, like I said, I'm cautiously buying back in the oil. If I see it go up, I'll dump it to dump what I bought. Um, if I see silver get a, you know more of a gain on a PSLV, I'll dump that portion I went into that was uh, I bought cheaper. There's already a pretty good gain on that, and that's the way I'm going to play it. Um, do hold the physical silver no matter what. I mean, always hold a portion of it, but it's not stupid to trade in and out a little bit. And watch that ratio. That ratio is very, very important. That's going to tell you approximately when the peak, the next peak, is serious peak is going to occur. 